woman. <laughs> I, I am, am beyond, beyond, and beyond, and beyond, beyond nervous. nervous. Uh, uh, I, I am so excited. excited. This, this is, is my very first YouTube, YouTube live, and um, I'm, I'm actually, actually shaking, shaking a little, little bit. bit. Because, because I am, I am this nervous, nervous but I'm, I'm so excited, excited to do this. this. And, and it, it took a lot of hot work and a lot of equipment to get this started. So, so please hop on into the chats, put, put in requests, requests, put in questions, make, make this, this as interactive, interactive as possible because that, that will calm my nerves. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're we doing something fun tonight. tonight. I'm, I'm going, going to test out the house labs new stupid love palette i got, I got it, it in, in pr no <laughs> shit here, here i am <laughs> oops hi, hi everyone. everyone um is, is this, this better? better this, this should, should give me my, My actual, actual audio. audio. No. Nah. How, How is this? Is this, this better? better? It, it should, should have. have. <gasps> there, there it is. is. I'm so sorry. There were two mics on. That's where the echo came from. Okay, so this is definitely a learning curve. Um, this is my very first time, so please bear with me for this. Um, <laughs> Oh my God, all the chats coming in. This is going to be so exciting. Okay, so let's start over. Hi everyone, welcome to my very first live session on YouTube. Is it still there? Okay, yeah, well, if there's still an echo, I can't fix it. Um, all right, so what we are doing today is a testing out the stupid love palette by house labs i am cracking up i you know i've prepped this so well and everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong but i'm very excited to be showing you this palette so what i've done is i've done a b-roll so let me show you what the palette actually looks like So I've actually got this little deck where I can switch between scenes. Um, so I'm really, really excited to get this started. Um, first off, I'm going to go in with a primer. Let me tell you um, what I'm wearing on my face. I am wearing uh, the Reboot Foundation by Makeup Forever. I'm wearing Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. And I've powdered off using the Chanel Poudre Libre Universelle. Okay, so now for eyes, I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Cosmetics Putty Primer for eyes. And I haven't used this before, so this is something very, very new. And um, I'm going to see how it works. Oh, thank you so much, Alexis. That is such an amazing compliment. Uh, it took a lot of hard work to get where we are now at this point. So I'm really, really excited. What do I think about the color palette? You mean this palette, right? What I think about the colors. So I've had a little dip in just to see what I could expect, what I wanted to do for tonight and what I uh, wanted to create. And I think, because I am a blue girl, I love blue. This is something that goes straight to my heart. Now you do have to be a fan of blues because it's predominantly blue. And there are some warmer shades that can be used as a transition. Um, I'll show you the product B-roll again. So there are... ...warmer shades. Um, but it does have to be your type of palette. So, um, yeah. I think we should just get into it. So I'm going to use the Putty Primer. Now, this is the one that is most neutral they also have this in black which is like super black and then there's also one that is super white so if you want to go for super 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 pigmented eyeshadow colors mono lids whatever you want you can go in with that white one but for this hi anna <laughs> but for this i think it will be really nice to just use the very neutral undertone and I'm going to be applying this all over the lid because 
You know me. I like to go big. For darker skin tones, I really hope they'll create a warmer, like a mid-tone and a deep tone for this uh, because I think we should all have the opportunity to buy products in our skin shade, especially if it's meant to be a skin shade. I would love it if they would create a mid-tone and a deeper tone. But for all I know, they've already done that and just haven't sent it to me in PR. So don't hold me to it. Um, you never know. Oh, thank you for telling me that you can't hear me during the B-roll. There are definitely some um, fine tuning that I have to do. Uh, but for now, I'm already happy to have gone live and that that technically is working. <laughs> so I'm already so relieved about that, but I'll definitely fix it for the next ones that to make sure that you can still hear me during the B-roll. Or not talk during the B-roll, that's also an option. Okay, so this is nicely primed. Let me know if you want me to zoom in and see all my blemishes and pores on everything. <laughs> you know, this is always scary. It is full HD live session. So um, yeah, it is kind of scary. So I'm gonna go in. Let me see where's my favorite brush of the moment. Not this one, this one. Okay, so I got in a few new brushes from my Kitco and this is my soft blender and it is just so, so beautiful. It works really, really well. I just cleansed it with my Cinema Secrets Pro. Now I'm gonna go in with a mix of two shades because I love this blue, but I think it's a little bit too pigmented. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lighten it up with a bit of that white. So the white is called 911 and the blue is called Enigma. I'm completely going to wreck this palette, but it's worth it. I'll zoom you in a little bit now. Haven't found a solution for that yet, but um, I can do it manually. So I'm just going to tap this color all over the lid. Now the primer has dried down a little bit. Thank you for letting me know about the delay. I'll try to make sure that that comes in a little bit more quickly next time. I'm just going to pat this all over the lid to get this really, really nice light blue eyeshadow going on. And there are quite a few shimmer shades in here, but I love that they made some specific colors really nice and matte. And there's also like a contouring color, which is my mind. I feel like that could be used to darken everything up or to, I don't know, create a nice outer corner. It's a good, good shade to contour. The eyelid, not the skin, the eyelid. Thank you so much, Amy. That's really, really nice. For, oh, Angus Quality, um, if you want to know about my hair, I released a video on my buzz cut not so long ago. So if you want to know more about that, you can go and watch that video. And I explain everything about what I did to my hair before and what I've done to it in the last 10 years. Um, but yeah, obviously I've had long hair. Although my mum really loved to cut it short. That's why I've moved to... Um, YouTube for live sessions. We are talking about the Stupid Love palette by House Labs. But yeah, I moved over to YouTube for my live sessions because I wanted to explore the idea of really high quality live sessions because, you know, all funning well on Instagram, but nine times out of 10, you really can't really see the quality of a product or the texture or what it is actually doing. So, I really love the idea of using my high quality camera to do a live session here on YouTube. Oof, that's a good color. Now I'll be mixing everything up for the rest of my life because that's just what I do. And I have a hard time just using each and every color for what they are.
Thank you so much, Anne Sophie, for responding to the darker skin tone comment. I think it's so important that we discuss inclusivity in this industry. And, you know, obviously, I'm a very typical white woman. So nine times out of ten, what I say doesn't really go. But I do feel like I need to be a good ally. Jesus, I am nervous. Let me just take a sip of water. <laughs> mm. Let me breathe for a moment. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. It's not like I haven't gone live before, so I don't know why this is making me so nervous. Probably because it's a new platform, because everything can go wrong technically. It can happen. All right, I love this blue. I absolutely love this blue. Now, let's explore some different shades. Okay, so we wanna do something different for the under eye area. Let me find a good brush. Okay, so I've got the refer number three, and I think I'm gonna go in with that like Eve Klein blue, like the Saint Laurent blue. Just pop this onto the lower lash line. Kind of want to be able to dip into each and every shade that I've got in this palette, just so you all know. If it's worth the money, it is 50 euros, I believe, or 50 dollars. I am not very much sure, but I do want you all to have a well placed perspective on if you think, think it's worth it or not. Now, this blue could have been a little bit more popping in my opinion, but perhaps it's because I've got a little bit of powder underneath that is making it a little bit more diffused. Best eyeshadow tips you'd give to a beginner. Um, keep a brush cleanser nearby to make sure that you can clean your brushes in between to make sure that the blend is really really nicely done um, and I think you don't need a whole bunch of brushes to be able to do that I just think you need a brush cleanser to do that yeah I do feel like this could have been a little bit more opaque or it should be applied over a primer but that's just a personal opinion the color is really, really stunning. Let me see what it happens if I just... See, it's not fully, fully opaque, so I think this would be great to blend a little bit of darker shadow into the outer corners, but it is not as pigmented as a Anastasia palette, for example. But you know, those are pro pigment palettes, so it's completely different. Um, but this could be a really nice blending shade. Perhaps if I would have put a blue liner underneath, that it would have worked a bit better for what I intended it to do. I'm gonna blend this out nicely. Now I kinda wanna dip into one of those shimmer shades. So I think I'm just gonna go for Alice. And Alice is this really really nice color i think it would be a good topper for this one i am going to spritz it with a little bit of setting spray just to make sure that i don't have any fallout thank you casey joan for being a new subscriber <laughs> i've got all these little alerts Ooh, oh that's a good surprise okay yes to setting spray oh that's really really nice what do you think i think that's loads better tips on working with very vibrant and colorful eyeshadow like this um i think one of the largest mistakes that you could make is to go in in blending motions nine times out of ten you want to pack on a color first keep the intensity of that color on the spot where you want to keep it and just blend out the outer edges. And I think that's really uh, a good tip to get started with vibrant eyeshadow. 
And just remember, um, sometimes those eyeshadows really do need a pigment primer. Um, one, because sometimes really vibrant eyeshadows can seep into the skin and color your skin into a different... Sh oh, shit. I soiled myself. Um, but it can really tint your skin. So what you've got for that is um, this. And it's called Derma Shield. Now, Derma Shield is a skin protectant, which is really, really, really important if you're going to work on set or if you're going to do really vibrant eyeshadows on your eyes. So, like, pinks tend to stain, purples tend to stain, and blues tend to stain, to be honest, green as well. So, um, if you're going to be doing that, make sure to either use a thick primer or go in with a skin protectant. Well, I plan... Daniela, um, I plan on doing this more often. If I can get the hang of it and not be so nervous all the time, um, my plan is to do YouTube lives a lot more. And then, sorry, I need to clean my hands. Um, and then if you have any special requests for a YouTube live, you can always send me a request on Instagram uh, or maybe just comment down below in the comment section so I know what to do next for my YouTube live. And I plan on alternating uh, one prepared video on the Monday and then the next Monday a live session. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it could be horrible. It could be really, really nice. Okay, so I really love what this color has been doing. It's the color Alice. And it has really been transforming for that lower lash line. I do think we can use a little bit of a pop in there. So I've got this eye pencil by Il Maquillage. It's the Glitter Eyeliner in Ice Blue. I didn't know it was glittery, but let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's suitable for the lash line or not. But it does give a really nice effect. Oh, I've got an idea for lashes. I might do that. I might not. <laughs> I might have a plan in mind. Now, also one of those um, predepositions people have is that you can't wear vibrant blues when you have blue eyes because it will diminish the eye color a little bit. The only thing is, is that the bluer you go, the grayer your eyes will look, and the warmer you go, the bluer the eyes will look. So if you're gonna go for a blue eyeshadow, just remember that they will not look not blue anymore. They will just look a little bit more gray. Ah, thank you, and sophie You guys are really, really nice. Okay, so I think I wanna darken up the outer corners just a smidge. So I'm gonna go in with this teeny tiny, I think it's a P07 by Refer. And I think I'm gonna go into Motion, which is this darker glittery black. Now, I didn't really see the glitter when I applied it previously, just to test it out. So I'm gonna leave it up to you what you think about that. Now, I think glitter on the waterline can be a good thing, but it doesn't have any warning signs on there that you can't... Oh, it does. Not suitable for the water. <laughs> ah, well, we'll see later how that goes. <laughs> you were right, glowing introvert. You were definitely right. It wasn't suitable for the eye line, but experiments. Okay, so I'm just going to darken up the outer corner. I hope it will stay focused with a little bit of that darker eyeshadow. Just to get a nice shape going. I've also always got a little towel on my desk just so that I can wipe off the excess and I can blend it out with the same brush. I should have looked at the packaging a little bit better before I started doing that on my waterline, but oh well, that's what I always do. Just a tid more.
just because I have really low, you see the outer corners of my eyes, they tend to go down. So I usually go in with a darker shadow just to give that a little bit of a lift, just so that everything looks a little bit more catty, catty maybe. Oh, the earrings, oh shit. I wrote down the brand and now I forgot. I'll put it in the comments later on, just so that you can all see. I hope that I can just alter the description so that I can add it. Sorry about that. Okay, I am finally calming down a little bit. That's a good thing. And there's a little more on this side. And it's a little bit more intense, but I'm gonna go in with a detailer brush just to do those final little details. This is one by Zoeva. It is the 240-243. See, I've had these pencils for about six years and they still work like a charm, but unfortunately not all of those letterings are still on there. There, that's better. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> I've been prepping all day. I did like a little test version, but that was actually quite completely different from this one. So, don't have to do that again. But you don't always have to go for a eyeliner. Jose for a good eye shape. I tend to love eyeshadows more, especially because my eye corners are slightly hooded, and that means that I will have a harder time with liquid eyeliner compared to other people. So with a little smudger brush, a little detailer brush, you can definitely put in that shape where you want without having to beat the crease. What do we think so far? All right, now, um, let me see if I can pop a little bit of extra color on. So I'm curious to see how this one will act. It has a shimmer, so I'm curious to see. Let me pop that into my inner corner. Grab another detailer brush. Yeah, I am going to spritz this with a bit of setting spray again, because it does seem slightly chalky. And that's not a bad thing, you know, you just want to be prepared for the fallout. So I just put this on the inner corner. See how that brightens everything up. That's nice. It doesn't have to be much, but it does have a really nice uh, shift to it. There's like something pink in there, and I absolutely don't mind Ah, uh, merci, Margot. <laughs> I love that. It's much more subtle than I expected it to be. But I do really, really, really like it. Now, what do you say? Do we add a touch of graphics or do I go in with mascara? Because I do have a Suva liner here. I'm just gonna go for it. I always have some kind of a graphic element to most of my looks. So this is the color tracksuit and it's a lot lighter than what it looks like in the pot. <laughs> I love that you all want me to go for graphic as well. Hi Darcy. Thank you for subscribing. Okay, so I bought something and it came in today and I'm so happy because usually I have the Ricky Skinny here and I usually go in with this really large magnifying mirror, but then I saw that they've got a really nice, cute, small one that won't get in the way of my face that much. So I'm really, 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 really happy with this one. And you can also turn on the lights, but in this light, 
I will definitely not need that. No, turn it off. There. Okay. I think I'm going to go for the inner corner because we've already nicely placed that outer corner. So I'm just going to go in here. Let me see if I can zoom you in even further. Ooh, that's close. <laughs> this is really scary for someone who's on Instagram and YouTube all the time. Now, hopefully you guys can actually see what I'm doing and it stays focused. I let the brush dry. Sorry about that. But I'm just going to follow that line that I've already created. Yes, it's a seven times magnifying mirror. And you also have this one. I'm sorry, this is not sponsored, but I really, really love these. Um, this one is actually just normal, see? And then this one is magnifying. That was my nose somewhere. But it's really, really nice because I always use a magnifying mirror for my eyeliners, my graphic looks, so I kind of need it on a daily basis. Yes, finger holes, I love it. <laughs> okay, so let me do this graphic eyeliner. This is the My Feliner, if I'm correct, by My Kit Co. And don't worry, I'm gonna go in with an even smaller brush just to hash out all of the details. It is 1.22 My Feliner by My Kit Co. Oh, I went wrong there. That's okay though. What's happening to my brush? And I'm gonna go in with that smaller one. So what I like to do for eyeliner brushes is to grab everything I can find in a art supplies shop. So this one is by Rubens, which is really just meant to be a painting brush for actual artists. And they make the absolute best eyeliner brushes. And this one, I mean, this is so teeny tiny and thin that I'll be able to get each and every little detail I could find. Yes, glowing introvert, I will post, um, just a selfie on my phone of this look tonight and I'll add all of the credits later on, um, but I will, promise. So I have to go a little thicker on this side because I smudged up that side. So let me just do that. Can you still see? And it's just slightly easier to do it with a teeny tiny brush like this. Although I love the feliner for an actual eyeliner look, if I want to make graphic lines, this is my go-to. Because I am a little bit of a perfectionist and I tend to get frustrated when it doesn't go my way. <laughs> okay, so, okay, you need to see this actually. This is how I do my other eye. So I cross my arms and then I can use my one arm, this one, to hold the mirror and the other one I've got like a little handle to put my elbow on. And then I can just go in and perfect all of those details without having any shakiness or anything going wrong. Can I just say, by the way, I am so, so happy that you guys are all here. I was so scared that this was going to be some empty room and no one was gonna show up to watch this. 
I mean, I think that's the, the biggest fear of any content creator is that no one will like what you do. And a live session is much different than shooting something freehand, beforehand. So I'm really, really happy that you all are here. Okay, so let me extend. Now, let me see, because this one is not going in as far as the other one. You know, normally I will take a little bit longer to perfect everything the way I wanted to, but for now I'm going to continue on with mascara and finish this eye look, because otherwise we will get bored of me saying nothing. <laughs> me saying nothing and just doing eyeliner for an entire hour. Okay, so I've got a little comment section right down below and I've also got it right there. So I can keep an eye on everything, but you guys are commenting really quickly. So I'm gonna try to do like a final five to 10 minute session of just answering questions. But for now, I'm gonna go in with mascara. This is the YSL The Shock Mascara. And this is my absolute favorite because it packs on volume in the first layer so well that I don't have to keep coming back to push the lashes up again uh, or to perfect it or to add another layer of volume. This is just my go-to. Thank you for being here, Kat. I do have to make sure that I don't smudge it all over the place. How would I describe my style? Oof! I think there's a sense of simplicity in there. Um, I think I've done a cut crease once in this past year. Um, I'm not really Instagram trendy. And I love graphic elements. I think those are the best pillars of what it is that I like in makeup. So I don't like to overcomplicate things and just keep it beautiful and simple. Editorial is a good one, yeah. Thanks, Kat. There. Now, one of the positive things about this mascara is that it dries up so, so quickly. So I don't have to worry about them sagging. Now, I'm going to zoom you out again because we're going to do a bit more face stuff. I love face stuff because we got in this really, 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 really beautiful palette. Oh, palette, what am I saying? It is a bronzer by Charlotte Tilbury. So I think it's the Airbrush, Airbrush Bronzer. And I've got the color two. Now you have to see how freakishly large this is. I love a good, big, huge matte bronzer. So I'm gonna bronze up the entire face because I am a little bit pale. So what I usually do is tap the brush onto here, distribute it over my mirror. So I always have to clean all of my products afterwards, but it also helps me blend out everything really, really well. And then let me just warm up the outer perimeters. Fairy godmother. I would love to be a fairy godmother. <laughs> oh, if you have really, really shaky hands, let me see where that comment is. Um, crossing your arms for shaky hands. Uh, full out earthquake hands. Wow. Okay, so what I usually do is if I buy something like a pair of shoes or something else that comes in a box, keep the box, put it on your desk, put your elbow on top of it, and then start doing eyeliner. And that will massively help with your application. And also just keep breathing, because there's nothing that can go wrong 
with a wrong eyeliner application. I mean, we all mess up sometimes. So it's not the end of the world if that happens. And just keep going. Buy some good Q-tips. I really love the Muji ones. They are a little bit thicker. And then um, I also love these, which are by my Kitco. And they are the On Point Q-tip, which is so ridiculously skinny that you'll be able to perfect any eyeliner or any look or whatever you want to have razor sharp. So I would invest in good, good Q-tips. Okay, so I've already tried this bronzer out before and I put it straight into my personal makeup bag, which is huge. Um, but I really didn't want to leave it here in the studio and not be able to use it for my personal life. So I really, 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 really love it. And it's funny because normally medium would be too dark for me or too orangey for me. But in this case, because the formula is so nice and fluffy, it blends out like a dream. I love that you guys are having conversations amongst each other as well. Now let me do a little bit on the nose bridge, a little bit here, connected to each other, a little bit on here. That never goes amiss. A little bit on the neck. And there we go. Okay, um, I think I do want a little bit of blush. So I've got this stunning palette by Nars. Nars, Nars, Nars. Um, and there's this really nice nudish pink in there. So I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. This is the Refer number four. And it is quite pigmented. So I just gotta be careful with this one. And blend that into the bronzer as well. That's nice. Oh, you shaved your head. That is so cool. How does it feel? Liberating. <laughs> Book this off in work. Okay, sorry, but that is going so far. I am flattered, honored. <laughs> But don't let anyone at work know that you've skipped work for me. <laughs> it's a very important meeting today, okay? Okay, now, next up is highlight. I love a good highlight. And Linda Halberg um, came out with this beautiful golden eye highlighter. But when you apply it, that's the funny thing about it. When you apply it, it's not as gold as you might think. There you go. Now it's sharp. So I'm going to apply this on the tops of my cheekbone. Now I don't like an overdone highlight, so I'm gonna to try to keep it nice and subtle. And I'm just going to grab onto the most top part of my cheekbone. Now, if you wanna do this super gleaming, you could. But I wouldn't, because I think the beauty about this one is, is that it's not so strong that it looks like you've painted warrior stripes on yourself. And I love that subtlety to it. So let me do a bridge of the nose a bit. But see, it's just a perfect amount of glow. It's not overdone. And I think when I look at my makeup, it usually just tends to be soft, not really harsh. I don't really contour that much, just slightly, but not too much all over. Okay, now let's move on to lips. I'm gonna wanna do something for lips. So let me just stick to House Labs. I've got the little box right here. And I think I'm gonna go for something quite Hmm, you know what? Let me grab onto this orangey one. It's like an orangey brownish one. Haven't used it yet. <laughs> Best meeting ever. Love this. Okay, so uh, 
I don't want to do a full lip because we've got a lot of attention on the eyes. So I want to do a buffed out lip. So I'm going to grab, I just had that little brush out. Here it is. This is like a little chubby baby. And I'm just going to buff out that color. Wait, let me see what that color was for those of you who are wondering. It's called Fire Me. Might be about that meeting. <laughs> oh, that would be bad if your boss was also watching and also had that really important meeting going on. No way! <laughs> We've got a boss and employee pair watching right now. Now, that is a good working relationship. Now, one of the reasons I really love doing this technique is because it's quick, it's easy to touch up, and you can make your lips look so incredibly full if you do it the right way. So the only thing that I do is use a little buffing brush or my fingers to dab out all of the outer corners. And then when you, so, when you take it slightly over the pigmented line, there's usually this white line, which is just a non pigmented part of your lip and if you fill it in your lips will look huge so let me do that <laughs> darling I usually just do like a really goofy smile because it pulls the skin on my top lip nice and tight so you don't get any of those humps and bumps in your blending and the best kind of product to do this with is a highly pigmented cream lipstick but with a matte finish uh, I think that's easiest there we go now if you want you can take it over just a smidge more. Now my lips aren't completely symmetrical, so there's this part that goes a little bit more down, that part that goes a little bit more down. So I tend to balance them out in this step and round this out a little bit more. It's not really a coral, there's like a brownish hint in there. So let me just swatch it out for you. So if you look at it full, you see it's it's more like there's um, a brownish undertone, like a terracotta maybe even. And then if you look at the brush as well, I uh, never thought I'd do this, but if you look at the brush as well, it's quite orangey. So it's not really it's not corally. I think corally have more pink in it. And it's a little brighter as well. But I like it. This really suits the rest of the look. And it kind of suits the palette as well. I'm just taking some of that product that I use to swatch and just intensify the inner part of the lip to make a transition nicely. There we go. I think, I think that's it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna die after this uh, whole life. Have you done a deep green or deep purple eye yet? No, not deep green. I have done like emerald green with the Linda Halberg palette for Christmas. I did like a gringy vibe. Um, and deep purples I must have done sometimes. But I do tend to go for more cooler tones. I'm not really the um, warm brown eyeshadow kind of type that I am. But I like the cool tones slightly better with my skin tone. And I could do it soon. Maybe I could do it for the next live to do like a really deep plum eyeshadow look. We could do that. Okay, so I'm going to finish up with a bit of setting spray. I love this one. 
but I also have the Becca one in my cubby at all times. So it's the Becca Skin Love or it is the Makeup Setting Spray Hydrating by Usanoa. And then usually I also have Fix Plus, but that is, I've run out of it recently. So yes. Oh my God, yes, I did. Let's do a bonus round for this. Okay, so this is the look, but now let's see what we can do. So I've got another Suva liner. This is called Blue Steel. Now let me just spritz a bit of that setting spray in there. And I've got this really nice tiny brush by my Kitco. It's the 1.25. It's called My Lash Groomer. And it is this really nice little tiny fan brush. And I'm going to use this to color in my lower lashes. That's why I didn't do them. It's good that you reminded me. Now let's zoom you back in, because otherwise you won't be able to see shit. Okay, let me grab a little mirror so I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to zigzag that color all over the lower lash line. Grab onto a bit more product. going to try to make them as bright as I can. Maybe I just need a spoolie just to get the first layer on. So this is actually one by H&M. It's called Spoolie Brush. I'm just going to see if this works a little bit better. Yeah, that does work better. I actually had this idea for the um, Suva paint in Scrunchy and then at the last minute I decided not to do it because I really loved the look the way it was and otherwise it would have been a really long video. But I think it's definitely a good idea if you want to have like um, a coloured mascara then you can always go in with a face paint especially one that really dries down and doesn't budge um, do make sure that if you have really oily eyelids that you don't take it all the way to the tips because the tips will stamp on your skin and then at the end of the day you will have this little blue ridge or orange or yellow or whatever color you are going for but you will have a very very prominent little layer going on down below that's something we don't want to do. I'm already being not so careful. So I'm stamping on my skin already. Oops. Now going back in with that, my Kitco brush, just to put the final layer on top. And you know, the fun thing is, is because the bottom is blue as well, you will probably won't even see it until you go to the side. And then you will definitely take, see it really, really well. So it's like a tiny little surprise in your makeup. All right, now let's do a few minutes of just answering questions. So if you've got any questions about this makeup or any questions in general, please pop them down below and I'll try to answer them. Oh, Hitchcock films. I love Hitchcock films and I am absolutely obsessed with the 60s and the 70s, especially when it comes to the makeup style. Blue steel. <laughs> How did I do? <laughs> One of my favorite, favorite films of all time. I love, I love, I love, what's the actor named? It's not Adam. Um, God, he's good. He's so ridiculously bad that he's good. You know what I mean? I think brown and blue, brown eyes and blue eyeshadow, absolutely, it's absolutely beautiful together. I wouldn't be scared of that at all. I think it will be really pretty. You know, if you're scared to try something new, maybe just do a little hint of color. See how that works for you. 
or go for a blue eyeliner just to see how that goes. Doing eyes after your base, doesn't it shift the base underneath? Mm, no, not so much. But it all depends on what you really, really like. So if you prefer to do your eyes before your base, that's all okay. There are no rules in makeup. Do you plan the makeup before going live or you just follow your inspiration? Well, I tried something out just to see how the texture would work. Um, and then uh, it doesn't even look the same. <laughs> so it's it, nine times out of 10, I just follow my gut feeling and that's it. How to stop concealers from creeping into force? I think you probably meant crease. Um, that really is to press your powder into the lower lash line. Now, my preference is to not take the concealer all the way up to the lower lash line and just leave a little room and use your natural discoloration to your advantage. But that's a personal preference, obviously. Yes, Amy, I'm gonna do a affordable slash drugstore makeup uh, sometime soon because it has been requested quite a lot. My eyebrows are quite close to my eyes. Do you have any eyeshadow tips? Well, if your eyes are like really close, you're going to lose a lot of your eyelid space. So my advice would be to take it all the way over the crease and make it bigger so that even when you talk to someone face to face, it will be shown, it will be noticed. Um, but it also depends on how bold you are and how far you wanna take your makeup. So it really depends, but taking anything over the crease always is my favorite uh, to do. Are you planning on doing a video on how to do skin makeup on dark skin tones, on a model perhaps? Well, I would absolutely love to, but currently, obviously, that's not possible. Um, if I do have a opportunity of doing that in the future, I will definitely do so. Let me see, top five gel eyeliners. I'm actually not really a fan of gel eyeliners. Um, I, I think something went wrong at some point and I just really didn't enjoy them. So I prefer liquid eyeliners or the aqua paints that dry onto the skin. Um, so for me, gel eyeliners, not my favorite because it's also more difficult to work really detailed and to slide something over your skin especially when we're getting older it's going to become more and more difficult yes on the affordable makeup good hi reka nice to see you here tips for people with different colored eyes i have trouble because one always pops so much <gasps> Take it to your advantage. If you've got two different color eyes, that's like David Bowie good. Put it to your advantage. Do two, two different eyeshadows on each eye. Just take, you are one of the lucky ones. Just know that. This is not a question, but you have one more time demonstrate that in, in terms Look is not necessarily difficult to make, so thank you. Ah, oh, Matteo, that's really, really nice. Thank you so much. Sending lots of love. I have some problems at time from doing the lower lash line and the eyelid shadow area, some tips. If you could maybe specify what the problem is, then I could go into it. I do do my own nails. Um, I've got this ridiculous thing where my hands are always red, so I try to distract people with nail art, and I just couldn't handle sitting at a nail salon for two, three hours to get anything artsy done. Uh, the only time I really enjoyed it was at Lakwerk in Amsterdam, which was, they're insane, they're really, really good. Um, but other than that, it just felt like I was losing so much time and you know you don't have your hands free so I was annoyed every time so I decided to start teaching myself and start doing it myself so now there are gel nails gel polish gel polish but it's not really that difficult oh you guys are so 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 sweet 
tips for deep set eyes slash hooded eyes with small lid space again i think it's the same question as before where she asked you know her brows were lower i would take it over the crease and make it big and kind of use that lower eyebrow and blend your eyeshadows into it and make it bold but it is definitely a personal preference if you want to put that much makeup on other otherwise i would maybe just focus on the inner corner and put a pop of color in there um, and then maybe smudge a bit of black shadow onto the outer corners of the lash line just to give it more of a nice upward angle and a more catty shape uh, and I think that will probably work best but again it's all personal preference high-end product that you simply dislike because it doesn't work on you Oh, I'm trying to think of one, but usually what I do when I, I, I feel like it's not working for me, I put it aside and then I leave it alone for a couple of months and then maybe I try it again. So at first I had that with um, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I put it all over my face and I just didn't get it because I thought it was going to be a foundation. And then when I figured out it was a highlighter, it was like a complete 180. So I had it in my cupboard for a couple of months because I didn't really take the time to just research the product. And then when I figured out it was a highlighter, I was blown away. Tips for makeup in this quarantine. Just go big. Because we have nowhere else to go. Just make it into one big party because now is the time you can actually do that on a daily basis. And later on, when we're going back to work, it will be more difficult to wear something so bold. So take advantage of the thing, of the fact that you're stuck at home. So go really, really big and bold and just show up to your Zoom meeting with something ridiculously beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Joanna. Hello from Turkey. Hello back. Okay, guys, I think it is about time that we started ending this live. Don't hate me. If you've got any last questions, please put them in here. This is like my little fair warning right here. So if you've got any questions, please ask them now. And then I'm going to be ending this live soon. What product is the best for you to fix the makeup? Well, powder at all times. And one of my favorite powders is actually a budget powder, which is the RCMA No Color Powder. And this is, what is it? How many ounces? Three ounces of powder in a little box for 11 euros. So this for me is my go-to. Um, and other than that, setting spray. Anything that is hydrating will go for me. Top smudgeable eyeliner drugstore. Ooh, just get a waterproof eyeliner. Eye pencil. I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it because I love waterproof eyeliners. So I'm gonna look into that and do it in the drugstore beauty. Some water paint, please say about some of your favourites and where it is better to purchase them from. Well, my favourites currently are the Suva liners. The cake liners, um, the Norvina cake liners, they are amazing and you get three shades in one little jar. Um, these they sell at Beauty Bay and I think also on Sephora but I'm not sure. Um, also it's kind of difficult for me to see if it ships to Russia or not because I am in Holland. Uh, but Beauty Bay usually takes up the entirety of Europe and a little further out. Um, and let me see the Pixum. That's not a water-based paint, but it is a waterproof paint and it's also really, really suitable for graphic eyeliner looks. I want to have more brows without makeup. I would say cleanse them with 
really gentle products each and every night. So I like to use cleansing oils, cleansing balms, be really gentle on them, stop plucking them and just see where it goes. Now also a good um, brow gel would be really advisable because it can significantly enlarge in your entire brow space. So I would go for soap brows, for example. I always have this in my little box here. It was really, really good. Or the 24 hour brow setter by Benefit Cosmetics. And that will definitely help you create a bigger, bushier brow. Ooh. Thanks Gaia for subscribing. How do you pronounce your last name? I think this is one of the most asked questions. My last name is pronounced Bernards, which is impossible for any English speaking person to pronounce. So I always say if you are English or English speaking, just say Bernards. I think that will probably be easiest, like the Saint Bernard dog. I think that's easiest, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna finalize this i'm gonna end this live i just want to say thank you so so much for making my first live session so enjoyable i was very nervous for the first first 15 minutes but you guys have made it so so enjoyable and uh, it makes me want to do it again so thank you so much and i hope to see you next time i'm gonna go now if you still have any questions, put them in the comment section and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> it's the wrong button. <laughs>